Hi everyone, Nick here from Firefly Studios. Today we're going to be revealing six core improvements to the castle sim gameplay in Stronghold Warlords as we move the series eastward to China, Japan, Vietnam and Mongolia. The economic sim and city builder elements of Stronghold are why we call it a castle sim rather than a regular RTS where really all you're doing is building up enough resources to just tank rush or zerg rush your opposition. These little details are what make up the overall castle simulation in Stronghold games, especially with the classic titles so we're going to be building on that in Stronghold Warlords. From dancing bears and children playing around the maypole to jousting and even the controversial gong system, Stronghold simply can't have enough voozle factor. If you've never heard of the term voozle factor before, it's a German term, a catch-all literally meaning the bustling factor, uh, the little awesome details that make up a great city builder game. That's why today we're going to be diving into the tea, housing, temples and different resources that are going to be powering your East Asian castle sim in Stronghold Warlords next year. The more eagle-eyed Stronghold fans among you, yes I'm talking to you Legenzo, well spotted, have noticed a few paved pathways in our videos and demo maps. We're pleased to say that roads are indeed coming to Stronghold. A classic feature in many a city builder, including Caesar 3, which our very own Simon Bradbury helped design, and our other upcoming game, Roman's Age of Caesar. Roads were originally intended as a purely decorative addition, but will now impact gameplay. Our original intention with roads was to make your castle economy feel more like a proper feudal town, surrounded by walls, but also connected internally. After adding these as cosmetics and seeing your comments however, we decided we couldn't resist the great sim gameplay potential. So in the final game, roads will be limited in number that you can place, but able to improve worker efficiency by linking certain buildings together and boosting various industries in the process. We're still in the middle of implementing and testing roads, the design could well change by release, but rest assured they'll look great and they'll make your castle economy feel even more efficient. We'll have more on roads in the future, so if you're particularly partial to a paved path, stay tuned for further details on that front. Core to Stronghold's economic gameplay is the concept of popularity. The more popular you are, the more peasants will flock to your castle, with a negative popularity rating resulting in people leaving your castle. Leave this unchecked and you'll eventually have no one to grow food, forge weapons or fight in your army. Full bellies make for happy peasants, and in Warlords you'll be feeding them new resources including rice, vegetables and pork to keep those spirits high. Surviving on just one of these foodstuffs is possible, but it's not ideal, whereas a variety of foods stored in your granary will give you a significant popularity boost. No weird keto diet for these guys. There's also some nuance to each food type. Rice is considered a basic necessity, so you'll take a negative popularity hit when you have none in storage. Conversely, given how limited diets were in feudal times, with periods of starvation not uncommon across Europe and Asia, vegetables and meats are considered luxuries. In-game, this means a positive boost when these treats are provided, but no popularity hit when you're lacking them. Just remember to keep all paddy fields, vegetable farms and pig farms as close to your granary as possible. Stronghold is at least half a game of resource management, so you'll want as short a trip as possible for your peasants to travel for maximum efficiency. After a short hiatus from the series, Fear Factor makes its return in Stronghold Warlords. Allowing you to inspire fear or love in the hearts of your followers, Fear Factor is back to provide deeper economic gameplay and some visual flavor for your castle. So we've got you covered, whether your medieval MO is to inspire your subjects with opera house entertainment and training at a martial arts school, or scare the bejesus out of them with various torture devices. Tea gardens and other good lord buildings will give you a positive fear factor, increasing troop morale and therefore damage, but also making you more popular in general. Sadly though, this comes at the cost of worker productivity, with everyone too busy catching up at the tea house to do things like pick rice or forge weapons. On the other side, bad lord buildings, like the various flavours of torture device we'll be including, will give you a negative fear factor. This means worker productivity goes up, but at the expense of both popularity and troop morale. You are torturing them after all. While this tactic can be good for the early stages of the game when you're still building up core industries, it's probably not what you want just before a big siege. After all, you wouldn't really fight and die for someone who's likely to put you in an Iron Maiden as soon as you get back to the castle. Get your fear factor low enough and you may even see a torturer appear to prowl around the castle and test out his devices with the help of one particularly unfortunate peasant. With the ability to build temples of varying shapes and sizes for your peasants to worship at, Stronghold Warlords will introduce the concept of spirit to the series for the first time. 
Similar in part to the churches and mosques from previous titles, temples can be built anywhere in your castle estate to provide a reliable popularity boost. For those times when the ale, or in this case tea, simply isn't cutting it. The key difference in warlords is that temples only serve the houses, workshops and farms in their immediate vicinity. To get the best possible boost to your spirit and therefore popularity, you have to squeeze in temples all over your castle to cover as wide an area as possible. Just remember, the bigger the temple, the better the coverage. Temples also won't require any special resources to operate. So don't worry, you won't simply be producing thousands of sticks of incense instead of candles. Next up we have housing, the means by which you give hard-working peasants like Chen, Wei and Fu a place to rest their heads after a long day of back-breaking rice picking and more dangerous activities like gunpowder mixing. Wouldn't want to be that guy. Housing in the Stronghold games has taken many forms over the years, from your basic medieval hovels in Stronghold 1 through to 3D housing directly linked to your keep. Now housing is both a means of accommodating your populace and caring for them, with the new housing quality system. In Warlords, each house type has a unique quality rating, going all the way from ramshackle shanty up to luxury accommodation with tiled roofs and, we can only assume, the most comfy of pillows. Each house provides both bed space and quality points, meaning there are a few factors to account for when planning out your peasant housing. Choose to splash out on housing and get your total housing quality higher than your population and you'll receive an additional popularity boost. Because who doesn't love things like actual doors and windows? As always, housing is a means to increasing your max population. But now, if you spend that extra gold to build a few luxury houses, the people will worship you, sire. Our titular warlords will also play a significant role in your castle economy, affecting how you build your castle with their own mini economies and the ability to keep your stockpile or granary full. Embassies are a new building type that generate a steady flow of diplomacy points over time. Use to bring warlords under your command, issue them orders, or upgrade their castles and abilities. Large and small embassies are available, generating varying amounts of diplomacy over time. However, only a limited number of these can be built at once, with both costing a sizable amount of gold to construct. This means, of course, that you have to get your basic economy going before you can turn an eye to any nearby warlords. Their high gold cost means embassies aren't an immediate priority then, but once built, you'll want to protect them at all costs. While destroyed embassies won't mean lost diplomacy points, there are much better things to be spending your gold on at that point in the game, like rocket towers. Warlords under your command can be used to boost not only your armies, but your economy as well. The Ox Warlord, for instance, can send a variety of industry resources your way, while the Pig Warlord might be able to send some extra food if your granary is looking a little on the empty side. In this way, missions or skirmish matches where a certain resource or food type is scarce can make the Warlords themselves a key economic resource. We've even outfitted the Warlords with their own mini economies and defences, giving you an idea of their specialities and defensive capabilities at a glance. So there you have it, six castle sim improvements coming to Stronghold Warlords next year. We're hoping to take advantage of the new setting in terms of Voozle Factor, in terms of castle sim gameplay, and of course the units, which will be taken from four unique cultures. If you haven't already checked out our video on the Soldiers of Warlords, make sure you do that now and stay tuned for more videos regarding new animations, resource chains, and other features coming to the game next year. Now, if there's anything we missed in today's video, let us know by joining the official Stronghold Discord. Uh, there's a Warlords questions channel in there where you can put your questions, and I'll actually be using that pretty soon for an end of year Q&A. So whether you have a pressing question about exactly how much urine will be used in the creation of gunpowder in Warlords, or just want to know if any classic Stronghold characters like Bessie will be returning, that's how you can let us know. As always, if you haven't already done so, please do wishlist the game on Steam, and you can also subscribe here and hit the bell on Firefly Studios YouTube for the latest news, features, gameplay, and demos.